Hey, Mr. Rops here. We're going to do a modeling question here, and all the units are in meters. And uh, so we have the perimeter of a swimming pool, a large resort is being designed. So here's the photo. Looking down on the pool is shown on the right as a shaded shape with T of X is referring to the top edge, and B of X is the bottom edge. And attempt to model it, the, uh, the following points that are obtained for the bottom of the pool. And so X and B of X have various points here. It says determine the best fit quadratic model to three significant figures for the bottom of the pool. So <clears throat> to do so, I just go to my calculator, and I go stat, and I put these values into my list. I have them in L1 and L2 as such, and I go stat, I'm going to calculate, I'm going to do quadratic, which is number 5, L1, L2, good, and I'm going to store the regression equation, I'm going to put it into Y2, uh, because I have something in Y1 already, and it's Y2, and then I'm going to calculate it. And so, B of X is equal to 0 0.143, because it's three significant figures, I have to round this properly, X squared, minus 0, 0.0, now I start significant figures, 6, 0, 6, X, because it's just 6, 0, 6, these are three significant figures, these are just placeholders. And then finally it's minus 1.0, oh, 1.997 to three significant figures is going to be 2.00. And I have to write these zeros to show that they're significant. And so this is the answer to the first part, three significant figures. Be careful about that. This is something to look out for. Finally, it says write down the R squared value. Well, that's quite straightforward. R squared is 0 0.962. 0 0.962. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Continue along. We know the top of the pool has the following points to create a model. T of X. George creates this particular model here. And we want to show that the sum of the square residuals for this model is 1.99. So if I go to my equation here, I know... I can see that the blue graph here is Y1. I've already typed it in. And I'm going to go on top of this one. I'm going to turn off. And so if I go to my table, if I'm going to table set it, let's start at zero and go by ones. And let's see what we have. So I know that negative three on my table is negative. So this is my model is going to be 0 0.8 negative. If I go to negative 2, I get 4.5. If I go to 0, I get 4.9. And if I go to 2, I get negative 0 0.3, negative 0 0.3. And so the residuals is the difference between the actual value and these expected from the cubic model. And so the sum of square residuals, and I have to show it, so I have to show this calculation. It's going to go negative 1 subtract the difference between the two squared plus 4 minus 4.5 squared plus 5 minus 4.9 squared plus 1 plus 0 0.3 squared. And if you throw this in your calculator, you hope and pray that you get 1.9, and I've done it a million times. Let's just say that it's true. So on your paper, if you want to save time, if you're 100% sure this is true, you could just write that and that would be your full three points. One point is going to be for showing these values. Another point is going to be for the method. And the second point is for the substitution. Okay, continuing on. Um, C part says, using the point of intersections of T and B, find the maximum horizontal distance needed for the pool. So the maximum horizontal distance is this value to this value. And so if I'm going to find my functions, I'm going to turn this back on. And I want to graph it. Now, my window I'm going to choose, well, I know I'm going from negative 3 to 2 as my base function. So let's go to negative 4 down to up to 3. And let's just graph from there. And so here is my here are my functions, which is this picture here, just the scale is off, and so I want these points of intersection. So if I do the first one, intersect 1, 2, 
And it says to guess if I put it close to this one, I'll get the first one, which is x equals negative 2.96794. And I've written lots of decimal places because I want to subtract them and get it correct to three decimal places. Going back, I'm going to find the other one. I'm going to intersect the first curve, the second curve. And I look, I'm just going to type 2 because that's kind of close to where this answer is. And I get 2 point x equals 2.4613. And so I'm looking for the distance is going to be these two subtracted. So if I then go 2.4613, subtract 2, oh, and negative 2.8. Nine six seven nine, and I can see that it's going to be five point four. So the distance will be five point four three meters. Okay, and so we have to be careful of our rounding all the way through. Now, D part says the resource is looking for a single vertical lane here. We want to know the longest value that this can be, so we can be swimming. So I know. If this value here was 10 and this value here happened to be uh, 3, well, this would be a distance of 7. It's 10 subtract 3. So when I think about this, if I take my t of x, my top function, subtract my bottom function, that's really going to be equal to the distance. And I want that to be a maximum. So if I go to my calculator, I'm going to turn this off and turn this off and I'm going to actually subtract these two functions. I'm going to take the first function y1 alpha y1 minus alpha y2 and I my x values are good. Let's just hit the graph and see what happens. I want this maximum here. So if I go second calculate maximum is number four well, that's going to be negative 3. It's the left bound. My right bound could be 0. And let's just say negative 1. All right, so from my graph here, we can see that the maximum is equal to 7.81 meters. So this maximum value is going to be how far the longest distance here is going to be. All right, and then finally, the last part of the question says, here's my table of values still for t of x. Sarah believes that, that we can make a better model, and so she proposes this particular model here with this value of a. Using the sum of the square residuals as the criteria, determine the range of possible values of a for Sarah's model to be better. Well, that means I need to calculate these residuals with A. And so if I come here, I don't need these anymore. I'm going to clear all these off. If I put Sarah's equation in here, I'm going to put 0 0.2 x cubed, x cubed minus 0 0.55 x squared minus 1.7x. The a is not there. I'm going to deal with the a myself. And now if I go to my table, I know that t2 of x, when x is minus 3, will be, here, let's pull this over here. This value here will be minus 5.25 plus a. That's going to be t at minus 3 t at minus 2 will be negative 0 0.4 plus a, because each of these, this is this part, and so I'll be plus a. t at 0 will be a, and then t at 2, at 2 will be negative 4 plus a. Now, when I find my residuals, my residuals here is going to be the actual value subtract the predicted value. So negative 1 
subtract mm, let's do it the other way around I can also do it the other way around where I'm going to actually take the because it's squared the order that I subtract them doesn't matter it's going to be easier if I go negative 5.25 plus a minus 1 mi minus a negative 1 we plus 1 squared plus I go to the next value going to be f the negative 0 0.4 plus a subtract 4 squared plus uh, a minus 5 squared plus uh, the negative 4 plus a minus 1 squared. I want this is the sum of the square residuals. I want that to be less than the original one of George's, which was 1.99. I want that to be less than 1.99. So this is creating the sum of the square residuals in terms of A. In order to solve it, I'm going to use my calculator. And so when I solve it here, I'm going to go negative 5.25 plus 1 plus x squared plus negative 0.4 plus x minus 4 squared. I just hope and pray I don't type these incorrectly. Mm, x minus 5 squared plus negative 4 plus x subtract 1 squared and then for my y2 I'm going to put 1.99 and if I look at my window I think that will be okay if I graph it now mm, I don't see let me make my x value bigger like let's make it out to 20 now let's try it. Ah, there we go. And so when my A value is in this range here, it is a better model than the previous model. So if I find those two points, I'm going to calculate the intersection. So the first value here is 5.28. I look at the other value, second trace, intersect one, two, guess at one. And this is, this one here is going to be 4.05. So if A is between 4.05 and 5.28, then Sarah's model is better, is better. And that is the range of possible values of A. Assuming I've typed this into my calculator correctly, which on the video is always hard to make sure that I haven't messed up. Okay.